you know, young people to come into the business don't exactly understand the, the, what they're getting themselves into when they come to Local 94. You look around Manhattan, and the best is at night when you see the skyline, and you look at all these buildings lit up. When you walk into the building, you're not going to run into a Local 94 member. He's there in the back of the house taking care of all the, the life safety, heating, air conditioning, and ventilation. We are controlling the biggest buildings in the world, and we are the center of it, making sure that they run internally 100%. The local 94 member, the day he walks in the door as a new member, we don't tell him it's a job, we tell him it's a career. My name is Raymond Macko. I'm the assistant business manager of Local 94. When I walk in the door each morning, I think about the responsibility Local 94 has to not just its 6,400 members, but to the 18,000 lives, which are the families of those members. This job is a calling, is the only way to describe it. You have to love what you do here every day. It is not an eight hour job. You get here in the morning, you pick up your calls from the, the night before, and you don't leave until all your calls are done at the end of the night. Nobody here was ever promised a 40 hour work week. Uh, that's not how we do things, and our members don't work 40-hour work weeks. Local 94's charter was established in 1937. It was set up for commercial office buildings, powerhouse, clubs, apartment houses, schools. Once it started, I don't think anybody ever thought that Local 94 would, would grow or that the commercial office building industry would grow so large. As we stand here today, being the largest local in the East Coast is, uh, is extraordinary. Whenever I go somewhere out of state, or if I go to a conference, and they find out that I'm Local 94 in New York City, they're in awe of me. What we do here is keeping New York City running. We operate the equipment. We know when things are safe, when things are not. We work through pandemics, we work through hurricanes, we work through 9-11, we work through blackouts. Local 94 are truly first responders because when the fire department even comes to the building, they're looking for the Local 94 member. And nobody knows the building better than a Local 94 member. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing The one up. event that really stands out in New York City to me was 9-11 and, and what Local 94 did and how they performed to get those buildings up and line, back online. And so uh, if, if there's any event that I had to pick out, it'd be 9-11. It's an incredible sight, to be honest. When Hurricane Sandy hit and there was no power, there was no ways of getting there. And I remember the director of engineering, uh, he was coming in and picking us up so that we would be able to get to the building. But the COVID pandemic was an illustration of the longstanding ties between the real estate industry and Local 94 and how that relationship came to bear in New York's darkest days. And our reliance on the union in helping maintain these buildings got us through some very tough patches and set us up, both the industry and Local 94, for some great days ahead. I absolutely have a lot of trust and faith in Local 94. They've been a great partner all these years and I have great relationships with the union and I, we, I cannot conceive of doing business in this city without Local 94. I'm very excited to be uh, associated with Local 94. Their leadership uh, really has stepped up to the plate over and over again. Um, their membership um, is really second to none in terms of their work ethic and the pride that they take in their work. The Local 94 member does not have any limitations whatsoever when they get into this trade. My name is Joe Zabo from Paramount Realty Group. I run property management operations. We have uh, over 14 million square feet across the nation that we uh, call Class A. And it's very important to make sure the tenants are perfect, so we have to do our job. Uh, many of our members have walked into the door as helpers, and we've had people that have excelled so far up where they're actually owners in buildings downtown. I began as a Local 94 apprentice in 1983. Apprentice at 445 Park Avenue, and then I got my refrigeration license, uh, Tishman Spire for a long part of my career, and I grew, and then uh, I went management on the engineering side in 96. See you guys. I became a managing director in 2010. I became the head of global operations for Tishman Spire in 2015, and came back into Manhattan with Paramount Group 
to run uh, national property management. I have a chief engineer shirt that when I left 1301 6th Avenue in 96, my goodbye party, they framed my chief engineer shirt when I became a suit, uh, is what they say. They framed my shirt and I hung it in my uh, garage. One of the things I end up putting on the, the frame was a little sticker on the bottom, uh, in case of emergency, break the glass. I start off like I did in 2004 as a helper, work my way to my ultimate goal, which is to be a leader and to be assistant chief. To an assistant chief, to a chief engineer, to a director of engineering, to a portfolio chief engineer. Dream big. If I was talking to an apprentice today, I would say to him, dream big, him or her. I've just been a few months in this union now and it's already made a major impact on my life. I see a brighter future um, with stability for my family. I also see major opportunities for growth. There will always be a need for engineers and there will always be a need for keeping people warm and keeping people cool. It's always been the case and it will continue to always be the case that 94 is the goal and that's what engineers out there strive for is to join 94. Local 94 is a career, it's also a family environment. They help you grow. They help you learn. They help you to evolve to become a better person. Absolutely, you are getting a family when you're a union member and you would particularly when you're in Local 94. Boy, I pinch myself sometimes. I think about the early days and I think about coming up through my career, never ever believing that I'd reach the uh, ranks that I have reached within c and I've been lucky, I've worked hard, I've had some great mentors, union mentors, ultimately other mentors within the company, but it's been a tremendous run and uh, a great successful career. I've been a member since uh, 2004, so I'm going on my 18th year in Local 94. I'm a retired member of Local 94. I've done 45 years in the local. I'm a proud Local 94 member since 1980. 42 years, going on 43. I've been a member of the union when I started in 1992 for about 17 to 18 years. We are the heart and soul of these buildings to go in and see the engine room purring, giving chilled water up to the high rise of the building. Uh, it gives you that good feeling and that you're a part of this, okay? Those machines don't turn on by themselves. They need us as operators to do that. You know, my wife told me sometimes, you take better care of 300 Park than your own home. I said, without 300 Park, we wouldn't have a home. And that's the analogy. This is where a lot of the training happens. We want to have both connections to the system through the gauge. And through the efforts of our training. Why? I want to make 42 degree chill water. Take advantage of the training. These will still be pretty much in series. Obviously, better, better training. So what's your thought process? As a leader of the organization, you have to make sure that you set the path of the future of the organization. Most of the direction of Local 94 has really centered around the training uh, and making sure that we raise the bar at Local 94 every day. The training fund really is a gem that really most people don't know about. Education has made Local 94 what it is. If it wasn't for our training center back many years ago and the forethought to, to put it into play, uh, we probably would not be standing here today. In New York, we have some of the most sophisticated buildings in the world, and we need a well-trained staff to do it, and the training fund provides that. Being a teacher, being an instructor here is uh, past experiences. We teach our students to look at a building as a, a living organism. Heating, cooling, controls, electrical, pumps, piping. There is a lot of um, things that go on in the building that the person that doesn't have the trained eye probably wouldn't see. My job is to take it from what's in here and teach them so that he can put it into their hands. I went from being a helper to an engineer, to an assistant chief, to a chief engineer, to a director of engineering, to a portfolio chief engineer where we transfer the heat from the higher temperature. So we start out with a PowerPoint presentation, and in each part of the presentation, I expand on the presentation by showing them a piece of equipment in the classroom, whether it be a circuit breaker, whether it be a, a, a three-pole contactor, a 
tool pole contact, a single phase contactor, and explain how each one is used. Maybe I could give them a little insight to something that one day when they're on a midnight to eight shift by themselves, they may remember something I told them and then it might save the day. My goal is to make sure that they walk out of here being able to do their job and when they go to their, their job, they're productive on that job and that they're going to understand and it helps them move up in their career because the majority of the individuals that we see here are all apprentices. So the next level up is for them to get their refrigeration license. Refrigeration is a key to uh, a lot of what we do in our training center. And um, this is where a lot of the training happens. Local 94 members that start new are entered into school and they have to go to school for it's actually a three-year program. But then they have two years thereafter when they graduate from school to get the refrigeration license. Oh, by far the best day as an engineer was when I passed the test and got my refrigeration license. This is a space where we train our members on refrigeration units. There's a big hype behind getting your license, and, and rightfully so. It's not, it's not something you just walk in and they hand out. The units here is where we train uh, our students with hands-on. Right now the test is on a computer, double screen. They made it very difficult. Four built-in safety questions. If you get any one of them wrong, you're gone. They learn how to charge equipment. They learn how to leak test equipment. They learn how to evacuate equipment. But here at Local 94, we also offer the best of training to pass that exam. Vacuum pumps, um, refrigerant containers, recovery units, these are all the things that they learn on these uh, trainers. This is where they get their hands on. Once they got their refrigeration license, they become an engineer. Then they have more responsibility. They were able to do more. Once you pass that exam, it's a feather in your cap and it means you know what you're doing as far as machine is concerned. Local 94 members not only hold the refrigeration license, they hold sprinkler sandpipe certificates, they hold fire life safety certificates, they hold air compressor certificates. They can obtain about 15 or 20 certificates in this local unit if they're doing it properly. My name is Ralph Rispoli. My name is Tashana Vigo. I've been a member since uh, 2004. I joined Local 94 in January of 2022. I was obviously a part of the training program, did the all required classes. I'm currently in our training center, learning um, in unit one, our basic commercial and building systems. And I actually even doubled up on them at the time to try to just get my license sooner than later. And I am waking my way up so that I can continue to take classes and obtain my license. Right now, I'm an assistant chief engineer. I'm currently an engineer helper. And hopefully one day, chief engineer. I would love to be a chief engineer one day, and I definitely see myself making my way there. The training center was set up by contributions submitted by the real estate board. Uh, so that way we can make sure we raise the bar for our membership every day. There is an unbelievably close relationship between um, real estate management, ownership, and Local 94. Employers pay contributions into the training fund to train new people coming into the industry. That creates a steady flow of skilled workers who are able to perform at the highest levels. This is really a win-win for both management, the union, and our workers. Local 94 has been a great partner in how, in how we achieve uh, efficiencies at our properties. As you know, in New York City, with all the new codes, laws, and regulations for environmental, et cetera, Local 94 is a, is a terrific partner in helping us achieve those goals. Green technology is on the horizon. Uh, there is Local Law 97 that uh, is challenging facilities to decrease their carbon footprint. And in our industry, things change all the time. They change, you gotta be up on your stuff. And we have to meet that challenge of being more efficient. So what's to come? We can only make sure that we're watching each day as new technology comes in here to advance our training center to that level so our, our members are educated when they do come in. Part of our program is to teach our students how to be more efficient in running their facilities. Our magazine is called The Cutting Edge. 
we are the cutting edge of instructors and the membership will follow in this and it makes me proud when I, when I walk in, when I walk in, absolutely. I am very proud every morning to wake up coming to this school training center knowing that I could give back to those members so they could achieve all the goals as long as they reach out and grab it. One of my proudest uh, achievements is I've had five different helpers in my career and every one of them is either a chief engineer or portfolio chief engineer or director of engineering right now. And we still stay in contact and they'll call me up and they'll let me know how much they credit my mentorship with that. And again, I would like to let them know that not only my mentorship, but they were the sponge that we absorbed the information that was being fought. They asked the right questions and they remembered the answers. And that's what it's all about. Put it this way, putting my son and daughter through their educational experiences, whether it be college for my daughter or trade school for my son, couldn't have done it without Local 94. The benefit packages of them raising kids, obviously, all the medicals that go with it, and also the, the monies needed to, for their education. Couldn't have did it without Local 94. There was no question about it. The Local 94 member has a, a great pool of benefits. When a member starts in Local 94 and you describe to him the level of benefits, I'm not sure it hits at first. My name is Bill Ferranda. I am the executive director of the Local 94 Benefit Funds. When I speak with participants or members, I always emphasize the fact that their compensation package is a lot more than wages. Throughout different points of your career, you're going to access different benefits. Typically, when you're working, the health fund is something that you and your dependents will utilize often. Healthcare is, is a large issue in our country, but the benefits that are provided by Local 94 through the health fund really do assist our participants throughout their life. The annuity fund and the pension fund is something that's typically utilized closer or at retirement. At that point, when you do retire, the annuity fund and the pension fund provide you with multiple sources of income that you may not be able to receive in other marketplaces. The local 94 member, when he comes in uh, as a young person, is looking to fill his pocket. Young guys care about the hourly rates of pay, but it's a lot more than that. A lot more than that. I think it takes until they're in the, in the union about 10 or 15 years or get into their 40s and 50s where they start to look at how their annuity and pension has grown, where they actually start to have a reality as to what they actually have uh, you know, in front of them. When a member retires, there are two sources of income that the local 94 benefit funds provide. One being the pension fund, which is a defined benefit, which in essence is a fixed income amount which a retiree will receive throughout their lifetime. When members reach retirement, they're pleased with the monthly benefit that the Central Pension Fund does provide. And then there's the annuity fund, which is a supplemental resource of income for retirees. The annuity fund is a defined contribution retirement plan. Once contributions are made on behalf of participants to an account, the account is set up and participants have the ability at that point in time to invest those monies somewhat similar to a 401k. When I first started in the industry with Local 94, I was making $9.50 an hour. That's the starting rate for an engineer back in 1980. So I said, wow, the pay is great. It's such a strong thing to have both a pension and annuity these days. And then when the annuity plan started, and I believe it was 1982, and they started with a nickel in, in the fund, and I'm like, all right, it's a nickel, whatever. I don't think that you really appreciate it until they get later on in their careers and actually look and say, hey, I have something here, a nest egg. To this day, it's built up over the years. Incredible, incredible. This is something you don't think about during those 35 years, is you're hustling to do the job, you're hustling to take care of your family, and you're getting ready to retire. You have something more than Social Security to look at. You have your Social Security, you have your annuity, you have your pension, and hopefully that just gives you the path to a successful and happy retirement. Typically when a member starts, you know, they are on the younger side and uh, the first benefit that they traditionally utilize are the medical benefits. I've actually never had benefits, so being able to obtain such great benefits through the union and training program so that I can be able to see my doctors and keep up with my health is more than enough for me. I'm very grateful. As most people know, medical costs are extremely expensive. 
Through the Local 94 Health and Benefit Fund, the expenses are primarily subsidized by employer contributions. My son suffers from scoliosis, and my son had to have the operation where we put rods into his back in order to straighten him out. The Local 94 Health Fund provides services related to hospital, medical, and prescription benefits. And without Local 94 helping me and helping my family take care of the bills, I, it would be astronomical, the bills that I would have to pay for this. By having these enhanced benefits, Local 94 members are able to focus on their work, knowing that the Local 94 benefit funds will be there to assist them in other areas that they might need. I know guys that are in different locals that all trying to get into Local 94 because of the benefit package. You get a, a pension, an annuity, you have a health and benefit fund, you have floating holidays, you have sick days, and you have vacation days. What we have now is all due to the uh, leadership that we have in the local. They're the ones that created uh, the negotiations, and they're the ones that got us the benefits. We're here when the members need us, and uh, sometimes after hours we do receive calls that we do respond to. Is somebody having an issue? Is somebody, uh, you know, how is their health care? How are we doing with, uh, you know, the family members? And is somebody sick? And uh, it becomes a calling. Uh, you know, for what we do here, you know, protecting our membership and their families. If there are any questions regarding the benefits that are provided by Local 94, I ask you to please reach out to the fund office.